We have something big and black in front of me and we need to talk about it. Stick around. Welcome back to Thrift Shop. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate you watching my videos. So today we have the Hollow Audio Cyan 2. That's right. There was the original Cyan, which was, I believe, a headphone amplifier plus stack. But this is a dedicated R2R digital to analog converter, and we need to talk about it. So before we get started, we're going to do this in two different scenarios. First, desktop listening, headphone listening, maybe using some desktop speakers. Then we're going to go to a two-channel system, and we're just going to see how it sounds there. Um, I've noticed with DAX there are differences definitely between headphones and two-channel systems, so it's key to understand the differences and what you are may or may not like and also you should know that my reference for many for for a long time has been both the shit uh, bifrost 264 and the denifrips aries 2 they've been on this desk for a very long time um, they've been my reference just for listening not saying that they're the best they're just something that i'm used to and when i plug something in i know the differences so now we have a new DAC, which will be my new reference. So with that said, Hello Audio, where do you get it? Well, the Chinese manufacturer, um, I got mine from Kitsune Audio. Um, took about six weeks to get, it cost $1,200, and again, it's R2R architecture. Uniquely enough, this is a non-oversampling DAC. There is no opportunity to oversample, so if you're an over oversampling kind of person and you like that within your hardware devices then this is not for you um, it does both pcm up to 1.536 million we're not into the k's we're into the millions now amazing usb and i squared s on that um, most of your coaxes and optical ends are going to be limited uh, as it well many devices you also get DSD up to 1024. So this thing is, I don't know many DACs that can do this much high res. So if you're into a chew player oversampling on your computer, plugging in, this is a dream DAC for you. I don't do a lot of that. So anyways, we're just gonna talk about my experiences using this. Also worth noting that you don't have any buttons up front here. It gives you nice lights. They're not too bright. Nice white lights down here. Tell you what you're currently running at. But basically there is nothing to toggle between what input. So you either have to have one input on or just plugged in. For me that's USB. Or you have to have a device that can turn on and off. Such as a CD player that you turn off. The signal no longer comes in. It'll auto switch to whatever is being fed to this device. So if you're one of those people that like to have four or five devices connected to one DAC, you're gonna have problems unless you can turn off the device connected to it and then actively use the device that's, you know, you power on to use. So it's worth noting, um, that may not be for everybody. I particularly haven't had a problem in this scenario. Uh, although for, for headphone use, I'm usually just using USB. With that said, how does it sound? Well, all my experience in this configuration, all headphone usage is all USB powered. I'm not using a streamer to this device. I'm not using I squared S, so everything's gonna be limited to USB. I'm using standard downloads or whatever. HD music is coming from Amazon Music or my own library. I do have some higher res files um, that I've ripped. I've also um, have some high res uh, vinyl to digital um, wave files that I've used. So th there's a variety of things, but all in all, it's generally standard high, high definition music, uh, CD quality or higher. And I'm in love, all right? I mean, if I love R2R DAX, I love multi bit or chip based r2r i love the standard r2r by denifrips they've come in different flavors right so it, from my perspective the first wave was the denifrips coming in and the entry level point of the aries 2 here you can get 
gives you more of an analog sound or as they claim analog I'm not sure where that came from but but fully I understand what they mean um, the music is more natural not digital um, you with a di with the Delta Sigma DAC you can kind of tell the digital nature and some do like that because it feels gives you the perception of clarity and details even though it's not realistic so you have to know what you do or don't like along came the, the Bifrost 264 again multi-bit technology and that took that laid back sound of the Aries and that analog sound and it gave it a lot more detail so it was almost in between a Delta Sigma DAC and a classic R2R or at least the Aries R2R so a lot more treble energy, a lot more decisive, um, a lot of energy. Um, shit has their own sounds, so there's a little bit more vocal presence, a little more bass. Um, texturally, it's great. Um, and I do have the Bifrost OG1 um, that we will be comparing this to later in my two-channel system because, honestly, I, I still think that DAC is amazing for the price that you probably can get it today used. So the Hollow Audio gives you textures um, what do you mean well uh, first of all tone and timbre sound excellent there's nothing wonky um, with this stack it sounds natural um, it, it sounds closer to the ship by frost 264 than it does the Dedafrib series um, the first thing i noticed in plugging this in and using it was treble the treble extension is amazing and it seemed like um, anything in the treble, especially the decay of cymbal hits, lasted longer. Um, I could clearly define cymbal hits. They weren't just that. It, it was, you could understand the tone and texture of that cymbal as it decayed. Probably the best I've ever heard cymbal hits sound. You knew if they're right, left, um, really easily. And it wasn't just this, this you know, high-pitched, uh, high-frequency sound coming through. It was a tone and texture of an actual symbol. It felt like it was real. One of the things that I've been watching, I guess, uh, on YouTube and, you know, video, that's the quality of, of YouTube, right? So it's not the best. I have to ask you to go check this out. It's um, Drumeo, if you haven't heard of Drumeo. And a lot of times there are a variety of things over time, but um, some of the newer things that I like is that they'll, they'll get maybe a jazz musician and they've tried to play them a song that they've never heard. And for them, they've if you're a jazz musician, you're not listening to rock and metal. And I like rock and metal. So um, that's what drew me to it. So this jazz drummer would get on there and he would listen to the song, but it would be cut out of all drum hits, cymbal hits. All that is cut out of the mix. All you have is vocals, guitars, bass guitars. And they have to improvise and fill in what they think the original band you know chose as their drum line as percussion it's amazing improv it's amazing the what what i like best about it is you can hear the song um and they, you just have to go see it and understand what i'm talking about but you hear the drums that they are playing and how they record it is off the charts it's amazing and with this hollow audio, you, you get the sense of what is happening because you're watching it and you're hearing it and you're sensing it, whether you're using headphones or desktop speakers. Off the charts, um, you know, I think the stack in general, I would call it neutral um, with maybe a little more treble emphasis or at least, um, again, it, it just, it's textures. So all the way through... Um, everywhere that you know every point in the frequency response I feel like you're getting not just the tone and timbre that's correct you're also getting the textures you know the pluck of the string on a guitar is not just the the pluck you're also hearing the actual tip of the actual um, you know device that they're using to pluck the string um, you're hearing all of that and the textures you're getting through are amazing so it's not this laid back sound from the R2R sound that, that, I, that I like so um, again, it's closer, you know, if I say the ship by frost is between a Delta Sigma um, and uh, then a Denifrips, then this is a, you know, it's, a, it's here, it, it's hard to describe where it is in the middle. 
um, but it's absolutely amazing. And for $1,200, I don't think that you can go wrong. I mean, Hollow Audio is producing five to $6,000 made decks, various versions, Kitsune up, upgraded, you know, it's level one, level two, level three. The spring decks, you know, you're talking two to three to four thousand dollars, and I think that they made a very smart choice by providing this unit for twelve hundred dollars, scaled back desktop version. You can use it in two channel, and you don't have all the bells and whistles. And you are getting this hi-fi, hollow audio sound. You're getting something that may sound like a three to four thousand dollar, you know, some other deck. Um, out there in the hi-fi market, you're getting that for $1,200, and I think that's absolutely amazing. So we're going to do a device unit tour on the back. I'm going to pop up some pictures and talk about us. So on the output side of this, you do get um, you do get balanced output. You get single-ended RCA outputs, digital input. You're going to get USB. You're going to get your um, AES EBU, you're going to get your, your Toslink, coax, um, I squared S. It's pretty simple, right? So pretty straightforward on the back side of this. There's really, it's a DAC. You put it away and you don't need to worry about it. Now, let's go to the two-channel system and see how it sounds there. All right, two-channel system. I don't even know where to begin with this part of the review because... I am absolutely blown away. But first, we have to go through the process. So now I am currently running the MusiShare X7 TT88 tube amp. Normally, I would have my Musical Fidelity M3SI because I know how it sounds. Uh, it's tr very transparent, so whatever I put into it, it's not colored. It's not trying to smooth it out. It's not doing anything. I've been running this in comparison for a while. I know how this tube amp sounds. I've been tube rolling the preamp side of this amp uh, so I can do a full review of it. I know it inside and out. I've been listening to it like crazy. I am in love with this thing. The clarity is on par with musical fidelity. So, got the Hollow Audio Cyan tube connected here. First, I started with the Wien Pro streamer. Um, not saying this is a highest end streamer. Um, I just love the app, and I've got two of these. Um, so I started this uh, this running optical into to this um, you know standard CD resolution quality. It sounded good. It sounded great. Um, it's not anything to say that the Hollow Audio would outperform basically anything else that I put down here. Um, as I mentioned. Uh, normally, I have the uh, Shit Bifrost OG1 down here. It sounds great. I love the uh, Shit Bifrost sound signature. It does everything right, and I, I really can't complain. So it's been down here, um, and really haven't had a need to change it. Um, basically, I'm changing my DAX on my headphone rigs, um, and I don't think after what I'm going to tell you in a little bit, that this stack will ever move from this two-channel system. Absolutely astounding. So, this is how it started. Uh, again, um, it's fine. Uh, nothing stood out. Um, again, good spatial qualities. Uh, very neutral. Um, doesn't seem like I'm getting as much texture from the Wien Pro streamer um, than I am through USB on headphones. Sometimes that could be the headphone frequency response. Really hard to tell. Um, just wasn't wowed by the Wien Pro. So I used the world's best streamer, which I can't show you. Um, maybe I'll try to pop up a picture of it. Um, really great video on my channel. Check it out. It is the Ian Canada world's best streamer. It's not the world's best streamer, by the way. Ian Canada makes much better um, Raspberry Pi hats. This just happens to be one of the entry levels that I am absolutely blown away by. And Ian Canada, by the way, has his own website now. I'm going to try to do another video or a few videos of his products because he has some new ones that I absolutely have to try out. So first I started with uh, optical out of my Raspberry Pi streamer using the Ian Canada uh, Transport Pi Digi and uh, power supply with a super capacitor, 
and running optical out again was it was good um, and actually the Raspberry Pi was up sampling to I believe the maximum of 192k that the transport Pi Digi can run um, it sounded great um, really cannot complain about a thing uh, the first song that I believe that I listened to with the uh, in Canada uh, streamer running optical it was uh, Nutshell by Allison Chains uh, unplugged I actually got goosebumps it was that good um, I love the unplugged album especially House and Chains because of the guitars and you really get the textures coming through and it was just so lifelike um, the spatial qualities of this stack are some of the best that I've ever heard so I didn't stop there I've listened to a lot of songs but that was just the first impression that I got and when you get goosebumps from something you know you know, when you're listening to your speakers, you've got your system in your room for a long time and you plug something in different and it gives you the same information but with textures that you haven't heard before, uh, contrast that you haven't heard before. Tonal balance is actually perfect. Timbre of instruments sounds actually perfect. It's just you're getting a little bit more what I wouldn't define as resolution, but you're getting textures and that's uh, a unique quality of how this DAC can work and what it can provide. So. But I didn't stop there. That's where this thing got really interesting. So next, I plugged in I squared S out of the Transport Pi Digi because it has it. And I was a little bit worried because looking at the hollow audio uh, manual for the I2, I squared S um, connection, there were some positives and negatives that were different. Um, but in general, really wasn't worried but uh, Ian Canada has a layout that streamlines his boards to make the B version whatever the B version is I didn't know if there's an A and a B standardized but he says the B is the best for his boards so he run, runs that it's not configurable at least not yet hopefully Ian can do something with that uh, so I plugged it in and it sounded excellent it actually sounded like it was a little bit hot now I am running because this is a tube amp single ended but it is, there was definitely an output increase. Um, I don't know. Um, one, of the, one of the songs that I always use to test out spatial qualities, um, it, it, it's the whole album in general, which is Fear Inoculum by Tool, but uh, is Calling, Vo Calling Voices, a uh, certain track on the album. Right before Chocolate Chip Trip, both of, those, both of them are perfectly good. But I love Calling Voices because it's, it's this song just starts so low and the mistake that I made and I'm sure many other people make with this song is you turn up the volume on your stereo because it sounds so delicate in the beginning I mean the song is extremely soft extremely delicate in the beginning it's a must listen I mean you go listen to it don't turn your stuff up too loud because it gets going towards the end and just how things go in the soundstage tool does that album is some of the best recorded for spatial qualities that I've ever heard and that song was just was jaw dropping from there another song that I commonly use to determine spatial qualities is Led Zeppelin 3 and any of the Led Zeppelin albums are good obviously you do have some of that tape hiss noise coming through so you're not getting the blackest of backgrounds but um, you know Led Zeppelin was recorded in um, at least I know for many of the albums were recorded in actual like castles or you know big rooms and I can't remember the, the name of the castle I believe the, the third album was this if you know pop it down below but um, watch a documentary on it and it was by Jimmy Page it was pretty cool um, and talking about who played up here in this position in this position but but by, by playing that song which has an amazing play on the guitar and a banjo and where they're positioned in the room, you can hear that with this DAC played with this amp. And obviously, a tube amp is very good. Uh, you know, gives you a very good holographic uh, sound stage. And when you plug in the Cyan 2 here, you're getting it filled in and textures within that sound stage. The depth on this DAC is absolutely incredible. It's hard to get this with a headphone. You know, it's a limitation of the headphone. Certainly some headphones are wider than others, but you're not getting the depth quality that you do from a two-channel system. And I found this stack to be 
absolutely astounding. So I would give it top notches for spatial quality, uh, top notches for texture. What I couldn't believe for an R2R DAC is the immediacy and attack of this DAC. Um, you know, the Bifrost 264 is what I would thought, I believed, was one of the most aggressive and attackful multi-bit R2R architecture that I ever heard, of, and this takes the place, especially running I2S. I2S, this DAC was built for I2S, I squared S. Um, that's the way of putting it. Can you run USB? Yes, I did. It sounds absolutely amazing. Can you run optical? Yes, it runs. It sounds absolutely amazing. You run I squared S through this stack, and you're going to be absolutely blown away. I have not heard a DAC sound better than Hollow Audio Cyan 2 in this system, and it'll never leave this spot. Well, never is a strong word. There will always be something next year, two years down the road, or three years down the road. Commonly, I use my products for a long time, so let's just to say that this stack is not leaving here for a long time until something better can kick it out of here at this price range of twelve hundred dollars. Okay, certainly I could put something in here to three, four, five thousand dollars from Denifrips or Hollow Audio's better products. I could, maybe I will upgrade, but for now, this thing is going to stay here, and I am just going to listen to music just as you should. So hey, if you can. Put the buttons down below. Just hit like, subscribe. Costs you nothing. Takes you one second. Helps out the channel. You're watching this content for free. Just uh, give me a little help. Hit that subscribe button. Peace. And we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.